Hi, this is Odie, and today I've got another uh, toy from Pat Labor, and this is the CM's Corporation Brave Goken number no. nine, uh, Griffin type J nine flight unit version. There are actually two products that come in a box almost identical. Uh, this is the more common one, the flight unit version. There's another one, an Aqua version, which I don't have. It's out of my price range now just because of availability. But they do look very similar. And if you're lucky enough to be able to get both versions, then yeah, jump on that Aqua version if you can find it. Here's what we get in the box, the Griffin. So if you're familiar with Pat Labor, um, starting with the TV series, but also going up to the OVAs, this is one of the ongoing bad guys from the series. And, uh, I don't, you know, he's a, he's a bad guy. He's like a, a rival company made by Shaft Enterprises, whereas the Ingrams are Shinohara. And these guys are always trying to come up with ways to engineer fights with the good guys just so they can gather data on it and prove that they've got the best product. But anyway, he's a very formidable enemy in the show. And the figure is very formidable in comparison to the Ingram that we got from CM's Corporation as well. Here's a comparison shot with the uh, Ingram, and both of these guys have a really high die-cast metal content. Now I know with all this black in the picture, the Ingram is really blowing out there with its white. Maybe if I turn off some of these lights, it might make it a little bit clearer to see. No, not much. And that's not working. But it's hard to photograph these guys for that reason in the same picture. Just their opposites totally black and white but on the shelf they look really fantastic together and they're both heavy with die cast now you can see that the griffin is a full head at least higher than the ingram and i think that's pretty accurate to how it is in the show so uh, i don't know about scale with other figures but to each other at least they seem like they are in scale the Griffin is a really beautiful design, but uh, now that I have the figure in hand, I think that it's a little bit stupid because this is meant to be sort of the ultra mobile, like super fast response, uh, ultimate kind of labor, which has all its systems tied directly into a person, not just mechanical control. So it can behave and move like a person. But seeing the design in person it's got all these points where the armor pieces stop it from moving so it turns out that this is i can't even move out sideways this is no way in reality going to match up to the hype that we get from the show but it does look fantastic it is predominantly black but there are some painted details so um, on the front you can see the little red triangle and red and grey painted details with the circles on the collar and just under the arm there you can see some kind of air intake which is uh, I think orange paint. Some of these grey details here, I think these grey ones are painted on as well. So uh, the little lights on the top of the head, we do have attention to detail despite the fact that there's not a lot of that detail. The eye piece in here is a see-through plastic and if you can just catch the light you'll see into there I would have loved it if there would have been an LED in there just because it's very hard to see on the shelf or even in photos because that plastic doesn't let much light through and the black behind it doesn't reflect much light but it's nice and glossy and I really like that one thing that does bother me slightly is the difference in tone of the blacks so the die cast parts like this big piece here, the thighs, the forearms. I think these shoulder pieces are really a solid, glossy black. But the parts of the figure that are plastic, like this chest piece here, the wings, the head, they're not quite as black. And I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but they're really a very dark grey, which puts me off a little bit and I think they could have achieved a fully black plastic. I've seen plenty of plastics that are glossy and really black. I just, maybe it was an actual choice, but um, I'm not really content with that shade difference. And the most jarring example of it 
is right here in the shoulder. You can see where the two pieces come together, the sort of cowling piece that sticks up in the air, and then there's the joint piece under it. The joint is a really pale black in comparison. Let's take a bit of a look at the posability. So I mentioned earlier that this is a bit limiting. Um, we get that, but we also get this kind of ball underneath, but it's it's not really. It's more like two kind of pivots, but they're both a bit limited. Uh, so as you can see, it can't really stretch out at the shoulder much. We have a double jointed elbow, so that's a good range there. Swivels as well. Ball. Is that a ball in the wrist? No, I think it's just some kind of plug. It just plugs in, so it's really just swiveling at the wrist. Wrist, excuse me. The head is on a ball. A good range there with the head. And it also pops up like this, so that you can have a look inside to see the pilot. Now, he doesn't actually raise up, I think like with the Ingrams. I don't, I don't think there's a way to get him up there. What I believe his name is Bud. If you want to get a better look at Bud, what you can do is grab this unit and continue pulling up to raise the whole chest up there. Flip this a little bit, flip this down, and you can just make him out in there. His face is mainly covered by the helmet that um, covers his eyes and ears and stuff, but it's not too clear and he is pretty tiny. Uh, I think he's in scale to the figure inside the Ingram just because Bud is actually a kid that's why he looks smaller but it's really just for show not a figure that can be replaced. You can see I've got the claw hands on the ones that really show how pointy the fingers are and I choose to have those instead of the one that can hold the gun mainly because almost all the time this unit is using its hand-to-hand -hand combat capabilities. He does grab the gun off um, is it Ulta in in uh, the OVA and throw it so this figure comes with a gun now if you bought the the aqua version if you're lucky enough to get that it actually comes with a hand connected to a severed Ingram head that would be really awesome but I don't have that one but uh, other than that there are really no accessories with the figure moving down to the hip area we get very limited movement it doesn't go out at all just because this bit is in the way and that's die cast um, it does go in a bit we get a little bit of backwards and forwards but I don't feel like bending it more than that because it just feels like something is going to tear maybe that that cloth weather seal in there might tear at the knee we do get a double joint so you can bend it right back like that the ankle you can go side to side, backwards and front, backwards and forwards rather. And on the inside of the ankle, we get this uh, kind of piston to make it look cool. None at the front, so just those two at the back. This is a plastic section pegged on and it feels relatively weak. Looking at the side of the lower leg, you can see all those little plastic um, screw covers which I've inserted. Now. They're a little bit tricky to get in. There is a, a flat edge on one side, so they're not perfectly round, that is supposed to let you align them, but that is a very minor flat edge, and unless you're looking extremely close, it's hard to even realize that that's there. I ended up getting these ones on fine, but in particular, I had some trouble with, where is it? Just the, the forearm, getting these screw covers to be exactly right. Looking at this guy from the back, he's still equally as impressive, and then his wings become really evident. Now, they're on ratchets, and they can bend out like that, and there's two points of movement here and here. Although it has two, we don't get that much travel in it, so that's as far out as it can go. I would have liked it if they could stick out more, because they look like they're meant to go out more than that. And, I mean, I understand also why these are plastic, because the weight would have really overbalanced this figure and just made it so it can't stand up but they don't feel quality like the rest of the figure being plastic. The tail part here looks as if it should bend up through this slot for flight mode and I've pushed it pretty firmly and it didn't want to move. Uh, I'm not prepared to break the toy just to see if it can do it so 
something seems a little bit wrong there and it is plastic as I mentioned before these wings can also rotate like this now I'm not sure why you would want to rotate them like that and I have a feeling that that capability is just because this shares some parts with the aqua unit which might tilt up and down when it comes in the box these are not connected there's a little hexagonal metal pin that slots it in and I'm guessing the same mechanism exactly for the aqua unit here's the wingspan 32 centimeters so that's roughly 13 inches uh, the height of the figure about 18 and a half centimeters so seven seven and a half inches high to put it in perspective here we've got a uh, trail cutter who else have I got around here well there was the Ingram obviously we'll put him back in there and Jet Jaguar one thing that I constantly want to do is put this guy in um, action poses and take photos but because of the weird design the extremely long feet the lack of movement at the hips and balance issues that's about as good as a pose I can get having leg movement now that's pretty disappointing and even that's very unstable so at the end of the day this guy is really only suited to looking cool in static poses on the shelf which is I mean, I'm not disappointed in the figure, but I think it's a weakness of the overall design. My final thoughts. This is a very nice piece, uh, even if you don't have the Ingram. It looks pretty good on the shelf, and the quality is pretty high, only lacking in posability. Uh, it's easily forgivable, given the cool and unique feel that the figure has. When you have it with the Ingram, it makes an ideal baddie I mean what use is an Ingram if you've got nothing to do with it and this Griffin is the ultimate badass to try and verse Alphonse and Azumi and that's what makes it really enjoyable for me some of the design cues seem to be taken from Tekaman Blade or maybe they took it from this guy I'm not sure which one came first but I get that feeling from looking at it and it's probably just the era that it comes from um, is it worth getting price I think what did I pay for this I think I paid less than a hundred maybe with shipping it might have come to a few dollars more uh, I wouldn't pay uh, drastically more than that but uh, the aqua version is very hard to find as far as I can tell I've been looking for a while and when I have found it it's been a few hundred dollars so this is probably the one to get of the two and at least in the TV series this is the only one we see the aqua version we do see later on but to begin with uh, the episodes featuring the Griffin all have the flight unit so basically I like it and I can easily recommend it and I just wish that there were more figures from the line that were done in diecast like this one and the Ingram because the rest seem to be plastic and I'm not really interested in collecting them for the same price maybe if they were significantly cheaper now there are versions of this that are made by Revel Tech I don't have one and they seem pretty cheap to get at the moment I might pick one up just to get the feel of it but I think that having this die cast brave Gokin in my hand I'm not going to have too much love for a cheaper smaller more flimsy Revel Tech but if I get it I'll do a review of that this is my video review for CM's Corporation's Brave Goken number 9 Griffin from Pat Labor type J9 flight unit version. I'm Odean and thank you for watching.